witches, what's up? It is Boy Raven over here. How are you, witches? Today is Friday, so it's Freya's Day. It's lovely. Before I continue, welcome to my channel. If you're new, I welcome you. Again, my name is Y Raven, and I'm here to teach you basic on witchcraft. So if this is something that interests you, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every week. Today, guys, I'm going to talk to you about something. This is an email that I received from Julia. My channel is your email, guys. Most of my videos are me responding to your emails and your petitions and your questions. So I tell you, email me, layerofthewitch at yahoo.com and leave in there your petition for a video. But Julia wrote this email to me the other day and this is how it reads. Please, could you do a video on what you suggest when feeling both really drawn to research our witchcraft and also simultaneously overwhelmed by all the different resources out there. Listen, Julia, I hear you, girl. Trust me, I was there some time ago. If you were not born into this path, if you had nothing to do with witchcraft, what it is to be a witch, this could be extremely complicated and overwhelming for you to start your research. So how do we start our research? How do we do that? How do we go about getting the right book and the right literature for us, for what we want? There is so much right now. Anybody can write a book. So I'm going to tell you and I'm going to give you advice based on my own experience because you guys know that when I started this path, I have shared with you guys, I was, I was coming from a Christian church. I was not born into this. I did not have a grandma teaching me how to be a witch. I just have the urge to learn about the iconic crone, the Wicked Witch. And that's what I liked. How did I go about it? What did I do? The first thing that I decided to do was to answer my question generally. So I was very interested in different religions like what is shamanism, what is druidism, what is wicca, what is santeria, what is voodoo, what is buddhism. So the first thing that I did was to get a book that was going to answer all of those religions, questions about all of those religions. And the book that I chose was something simple. I didn't want something complicated because this was just the beginning of my path. So I chose Paganism for Dummies. Unfortunately, I don't have that book anymore to show you guys, but it was a book that really answered most of my questions in a very general way, but really answer my questions. Based on the things that I read on that book, I decided on which religion I really liked. What was I inclined to? And one of the things that I was very inclined to were Greek gods or the mythology on Greek gods and also Wicca because I was very curious about Druids, about Celtic gods, because it was something that my father mentioned many, many, many times when he was preaching. So it was something that really caught my attention. You wanna start simple, simple. What is it that you, that you want to learn? Do you have all these religions that you want to learn about? Which religion to go about? Then get something very simple on paganism because a book on paganism is going to address all these religions. And based on what you reach on each religion, one of them is going to call your attention. I know this. If you're just into this because of the practice part of what witchcraft is, still you must learn everything that is religious and also everything that is secular academic both things work hand on hand now once you read your paganism book and you choose a religion then you're going to read about that specific religion for example if you like wicca you guys know that i absolutely love silver raven wolf and her book of shadows for the new generation that was the first book I bought 
on the Wicca. And I'm really glad I did because I did not research anything other than I went to the bookstore and I love her book and I took it. So I was very, very, very lucky. Once you choose the book that you're going to start reading, you want to research the author. Does that author has more books? And are those other books in the same topic that you want to learn? Because there's a lot of authors out there that just like to write books. And they write books on many different things. And then that makes me feel that they're really not an expert in the book that I'm reading, right? Because the person writes about many things. So you want to get somebody that has a lot of books under their belt under the same topic. Silver Raven Wolf is a woman that is a phenomenal writer. And she writes on Wicca. What Wicca is. From all of her books, I tell you right now that the Book of Shadow for the Solitary Witch, it is the best book until today that I have read. It is so complete. And I have such respect for Silver Raven Wolf and for what she has given into the witchcraft community. Many people don't appreciate her for whatever reasons. I think she is phenomenal. And I strongly suggest that you read her book. Now, the beauty of Silver Raven Wolf is that Silver Raven Wolf is an extremely smart witch. Now, I'm going to base the intelligence of my author on the books and the research that the author at the same time has done to write her book. So Silver Raven in her book is going to give you suggestions of a lot of books for you to also continue your research, for you to broaden your research. Silver Raven Wolf is going to give you more academic books and secular books and she's going to suggest to you Ronald Hutton, which to me is the authority when it comes to the history. He's a historian of pagan religions. I strongly suggest that if you are going to do religious aspect of what is witchcraft, also do the secular part. And you do that by reading all the books that your favorite author is going to suggest. After double checking your author, you must cross reference everything that the author of your book is going to tell you. Cross reference is very important. And it's, it's like a chain, guys. It's like a domino effect because you find a good author and that author is going to recommend to you some books and you're going to be reading those books that she recommends and those books that recommend other ones at the same time. And this is how you open your wisdom, your intelligence, your knowledge about witchcraft. Make sure you cross-reference your author and make sure, make sure that the author of your book cites in the back of the book all of its sources. Very important and you need to cross-reference everything. Now, stay very away from the temptation of jumping into performing witchcraft without having the knowledge and the confidence on what you're doing and without having a book for you to refer to in case you have any type of trouble. When getting a book, I have a rule of thumb. The author must cite its sources. I need to see it in the book. I'm going to grab the book, I'm going to go all the way to the back, and I need to make sure that there is a glossary or an appendix that I can check where that author is getting the information for her book. It is a must. And then I'm going to cross-reference everything or most everything. And if things don't make sense, eliminate. There's way too many authors for you to be wasting your time with just one author that is kind of sketchy. Encyclopedias. Encyclopedias are amazing. And I shared with you guys a few encyclopedias that to me, those are my Bibles. Judy Caeva's Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, Encyclopedia of Witchcraft. Judy Caeva has a lot of encyclopedias. And to me, and at this time, after researching for so many years, to me, Judy Caeva is an authority on witchcraft. And if I need to find something out, I have decided that it's going to be Judica, one of those authors that I'm going to refer myself to in order to make sure that I get the right information, especially when I'm doing a video for you guys. Another amazing author is Rosemary Ellen Guiley. She has an amazing witchcraft and witches encyclopedia. She has an 
Alchemy Encyclopedia and she have dozens of books on the spiritual realm. And I strongly suggest for you to also double check all the encyclopedias of Rosemary Ellen Guiley. She was amazing. Last but not least, another person that I strongly suggest is Scott Cunningham. Scott Cunningham to me is an authority when it comes to herbalism and some oils and a lot of rituals of Wicca. Now you guys know that I'm not Wicca but I really really have Scott Cunningham as an authority when it comes to certain matters when it comes to witchcraft regardless if he's a Wicca or not. You will find other authors that you are going to like a lot. Raymond Buckland is another one of those authors that a lot of people like. He's not one of my favorites, but not because he's not an authority, because he is. But because he is very, very strictly Wicca, it doesn't resonate so much with what I like. But I do still have his books in here and I use them as a reference. What about testimonial books? I don't know how to call them. I don't know how these books are referred to. So I'm going to call them testimonial books. And when I talk about testimonial books, I'm talking about books that are written by authors that are just writing their opinions or their experiences, right? Things that they have learned throughout their lives and they want to share their opinion with us. For example, we have the books of Alan Kardec and the book of spirits, the book of mediums. We also have the books of Alistair Crowley. Now these are books that have survived the test of time. These are books that have produced traditions and religion. They have big followers. Now some of those books I take with a grain of salt. I will read them just because of the value that they have now in history and I will take what resonates with me and I will discard what I'm not interested in. You're going to find many books that are historical books. There's the Bible, there's the Lester Key of Solomon, and there are so many books out there, guys, that are historical. From those books, just because they're historical, they should be more those academical books that you want to read because they pertain to the anthropology and history of religions. From there, you're going to choose what resonates with you because ultimately you should follow what your heart tells you. Many of these books are absolutely worth having. The important thing is that you make your own conclusions about these books. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Wow, guys, like I said in the beginning of my path, I have none of this, absolutely none of this. I remember the first time I saw any type of witchcraft community in Facebook. I was so excited. But right now, those platforms are platforms that are a double-edged sword because you're going to have videos like this one. And I'm not saying that I have the answer for all the questions. Ultimately, you need to make your own conclusions. But you have beautiful channels out there that are going to teach you very, very important information. Very smart information is now shared through this way, through this means of what it is YouTube, what is Facebook with their groups, what is Instagram. But at the same time, guys, these different social platforms are absolutely plague with scam artists, with fake people. And you know what? I have some of you guys here in my channel that have written to me, oh yeah, I follow so-and-so in YouTube. Oh yeah, I follow so-and-so in Instagram. Now, a lot of these people are scammers. I do not believe in some of those people. And I feel really bad when some of you guys tell me that you're following them because I'm not gonna be here to argue with you what you choose to follow or not. I may tell you a few things or two, but be very careful. The same way you cross-reference your books, you must cross-reference anybody that you follow in social platforms. Nowadays, everybody and their parents can write a book. Everybody, absolutely everybody. So you have to be even more aware of many things because we live in a society right now that people want answers yesterday. Nobody wants to do research, everybody, and I live this 
every day guys because even though i give you all this information some of you still come back and ask me for questions that makes me feel that you guys want to do no homework i'm not gonna baby you guys you must do your own homework i'm going to give you my perspective on how to do it but you have to go ahead and finalize everything yourself we live in this society in which people want everything absolutely completely done done tell me how it's done or better yet do it for me no when you go into bookstores, bookstores are now plagued with books on crystals, new age religion, books on tarot, books on herbs, books on curses, spells for love, so many books. And <laughs> most of them are what? Super duper aesthetically pleasing. Very pretty to look at. You open the book and it have beautiful images inside and then you read the book and it's absolutely completely hollow. Nothing you learn in those books. Those are the books that you're going to eliminate and learn from your mistakes. Do not judge a book by its cover. Sometimes the cover is too pretty and inside the book is completely pointless and hollow. Also, be very mindful or catchy titles on books. Also, please make sure in the back of the book there, there's a list of references that you can go to when you finish that book if you want to. Uh, in Spanish, we said something like, El que no debe, no teme. So if you don't owe anybody, you're not afraid of anybody. Meaning, if you wrote something in there and you're very sure of what you're writing, you should be citing some sources in the back of your book where you learn what you learn. You know, a lot of people have very strong opinions about things and they don't cite their sources. Please cross-reference everything. Listen guys, witchcraft is not always pretty. Witchcraft can be down straight, <laughs> scary looking. So anything that is aesthetically pleasing, chances are is very watered down and it's just pre-digested for nowadays society. This is not what you need to pay attention to. Last but not least guys, witchcraft does not have a specific book to tell you how to do things. The map of the world is different for everybody. If you live in Africa, chances are you're not going to be interested in Nordic religion. I come from an island in the middle of the Caribbean. So any religion, and this is why I'm so detached from Wicca, that has to do with the seasons of the year, I'm not going to relate to because I come from a country in which you can barely notice any seasons, other than a lot of parties on Christmas. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? So just based on the fact that the map of the world is not the same for everybody, religion and what you read is not going to be the same for you as it is for another person. The more you learn, the more confidence you will acquire and the more you be comfortable in performing your magic. This is why you need to read and read and read different perspectives. Let's resume. Number one, start basic and general. Number two, choose your preference. What is it that you want to study about? Don't try to start in everything choose your preference. Number three, research your author. Make sure you know who that person is. Number four, cross-reference what that author is telling you. It's very important. Number five, check the author's sources. Where is this author taking this information from? Number six, research both secular, academic, and religious literature. It's very important that you research both. Number seven, eliminate what doesn't make sense. Don't waste your time on things that make absolutely no sense. Number eight, be very skeptical about aesthetically pleasing stuff, especially over the top. And when I say aesthetically pleasing, I am talking about not only books, but also websites, also channels, also pages. Because you know what? Witchcraft is not the pretty stuff. Witchcraft is not always pretty. Witchcraft is what it is. And it's pretty and it's very scary. And it's a lot of stuff right down in the middle. 
all right so aesthetically pleasing is way too watered down <laughs> almost made just for this new generation number nine guys trust your process of elimination have confidence in yourself and what resonates and makes sense to you number 10 the most important guys you are going to create your own conclusions it is a process and let me tell you you will never stop learning and the beauty of this is exactly that that is a never ending path the more you grow the more you want to know and you keep on learning and you keep on learning and the more you learn and the more confidence you acquire the more you are able to tell anybody that comes to you and tell you this is not how it's done you can tell them you know what see you don't come and bother me I know what I'm doing. Witchcraft is a beautiful path. Either if you take it for secular reasons, or you take it for the religious reasons, or you like both. But the point is that once you become a witch, it's a process of learning. I promise you this, guys. I promise you this. And I'm going to end with this. Once you learn how to learn, it becomes very easy. Because then you start to identify the things that are red flags and you start eliminating and you start choosing specific authors that will become an authority within your eyes on specific topics and there will be the authors that you keep on researching and the beauty of all this is that most of those authors are going to suggest to you more books for you to broaden your horizons and i'm here again layer of the witch yahoo.com layer of the witch yahoo.com I'm going to put in the description of this video the list of all the authors that I like for you to research, for you to read on that literature if that's what you want. Also, go to my website, whyravenandwitcheslayer.com, whyravenandwitcheslayer.com, because I will be linking into my page a lot of these authors that I really, really like. It is always awesome talking to you witches. I'll see you Monday with our awesome spell. It's going to be on prosperity. And I can't wait to see you guys on Monday. Until next time, witches, stay smart, okay? Smart, but above all, stay wicked. Bye.